All right, in this video, we're going to discuss how to ingest multiple data sources into the Azure Fire Service or Azure Health Data Service. This is the Fire 4.01 model running in Azure. It's a service available to all Azure subscribers. And we have a third party solution from Pi Systems International that we're gonna be demonstrating. And this system is really composed of two parts. The first part, is a converter, which is a virtual machine that's running in Azure that will convert HL7 version two with our liquid templates from the HL7 format into a fire bundle. Then those fire bundles are submitted to Azure Event Grid. And then the second piece is the iHealth Fire Orchestration Azure function. This is running in Azure and is a subscriber to the Event Grid. So when it sees a fire bundle come in, basically, it will detect that and it will disassemble that fire bundle and evaluate it. And then it will check in the Azure Fire Service to see if any of those resources exist or that they need to be updated or inserted. And then it will take the appropriate action. Additionally, it has other publishing capabilities where it can publish data back into the event grid that can trigger logic apps that can then trigger and send data specifically to other systems like say an order processing system Microsoft Dataverse, drive APIs for Microsoft Intune to say wipe an iPad, or to create calendar events and Outlook Calendar, and a variety of other different connectors and logic apps, the sky's the limit really. Okay, let me show you how this works. So I have some HL7 files that were created using the NIST message maker, and I just put those files into the Cerner input directory, the Epic input directory, and into the all scripts input directory and then i can you know pick a file double click on it it'll pop that open in notepad and then i can see uh, this is june hunter i can see the uh, hl7 data in notepad okay and now i'm going to run the data ingestion tool from pi systems and this will take these files from those directories and import them into fire so i'm going to double click and start the process and i'll show you how that runs it's a multi-threaded process. So it's creating multiple threads after it looks at the data in the files and it processes it and it's done. I'm just gonna check the data in my Teams on Fire application. This is an application that Pi Systems has created. It's a native Teams application that connects to the Azure Health Data Service. I'm gonna select the order by time here at the bottom so that I can see the most recent records that were created. When I click on that, I can see that, and if you look at my clock down here, it's 9, 8, and it's roughly around 458. So these are the files that I created. Here's, you know, June Hunter through Jerome Gordon, etc. I can double click on this record and it will pull up that HL7 patient data that has been translated into fire. And I can see that June Hunter is a female. This is her date of birth. This is the phone number. Here's the last encounters. It also imported some conditions, so dislocation of hip, and here's the encounters that it brought in uh, from the HL7 data. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you is if I click on the demographics, it will show me where the data came from. So we're using the fire assigner ID, so it knows the source of the data when it's imported, and it tracks that right here, and it shows me, and it shouldn't be the same number if these were coming from different systems, but since I'm using the same files over and over again, uh, it shows you the same number, but this is the master record number from Epic, from all scripts, from Cerner, and it's assigned a global identifier in Fire, but we're able to track the master record numbers from the different sources, as well as uh, keep track of it when we're going back, when we're sending data back to those sources. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how we can ingest from three different sources simultaneously all at once. And I've got the folder filled up with a number of uh, HL7 files for each one of the uh, import folders. So I've got 21 through 50 uh, on all three of these. It's just the same files that will be ingested. And now I'll kick off the process for all three. I'll start with all scripts. Oh, that's fast. I'll do Cerner. And I'll try and catch it. Oh, <laughs> it went too fast. <laughs> and there's Epic. So <laughs> I did all three. I was trying to get them to run simultaneously, uh, but it's ingesting the data into the fire service. I go back to my search, do my order by time, click on search. 
I'll now see it's now 502, and we've got a whole series of new records uh, that have been imported in. I can scroll through the different records with the arrow key up here, and we can see that there's a number of records, and we get down to the earlier time that I did it. And so instead of using HL7 data, I've got a sample Excel file up, and in the Excel file, I've got patient identifiers, I've got patient messages that can come in from any source, uh, I've got the patient name and demographics, and these patients don't exist in Fire. So what I'm going to do is use the iHealth AI to actually import the, the Excel file into Fire. All right, so I'm going to run the import, and it's going to read the Excel file and process all of those patients and messages in, and it's complete. So I'm going to jump over from the Excel file into Teams. And just like I did before, I'll click order by time and hit search. And we can see that Scott and Laura were imported just now. And I'll double click on Laura's record. And we can see that her uh, demographic information was imported from the Excel data. So I've got her email address, phone number, birth date, etc., And then her demographic information and it came in from an Epic EMR, is what we had it tagged as the assigner. We could say CRM, for example, uh, and we've got that identifier that I showed you in the Excel file. Let's go back to search for a second. I'm gonna hit search again, and let's look at Scott Robinson, and then let's look at his sent message real quick. So same thing for Scott and his message, but his message was in Spanish. So what happens is that it takes the Spanish language and it uses Microsoft translation services and it translates that to English. And once it's translated to English, it figures out again what it, where it should go. So it thinks, hmm, is this a vaccine immunization? Because it says I need to schedule an appointment for next week for my shingles vaccine treatment. Or is this an appointment request? Well, actually, it figured out that this is both, but appointment request is where it should be routed. So it uses that machine learning and intelligence to send it to the right queue. So it actually goes to the appointment queue so an appointment scheduler can get Scott an appointment. And again, we look at text analytics and how it interprets this. It knows that an appointment is an administrative event, that next week is a time reference. It knows that shingle vaccine is a treatment name. So now once it's figured out where it needs to go, let's go over to the queues, and then I can go into appointment requests, and I can see there's Scott Robinson's, I need to schedule an appointment for next week for my shingle shot request, as well as I can go over to my medication prescription requests, and I can see Laura's request right there, Laura Martin, and I need to renew my medication, and I can click to call from inside of Teams and just click to call the patient to reach out to them. Or, all right, well, thanks for watching this quick video. I hope you found it useful. I know this is a big challenge for a lot of folks is how do we really work with the Azure Fire Service and how do we get data in that service? How do we get data out of it? How do we orchestrate workflows? So thanks for watching. And this is available on Microsoft App Source from Pi Systems.